All right, I want to talk about empiricism now. And there's a little bit of a, a crossover here between idealist rationalism, what you know later becomes German ideology and Marx's thinking, and then empiricism, which is the school of thought that most strongly um, argues against and effectively causes problems for German ideology. Okay. Uh, one of these people is George Berkeley um, and and uh, now George Berkeley is is the namesake of UC Berkeley. Um, and I kind of have him located up there in uh, idealism, rationalism, uh, but he's generally believed to be part of empiricism. But I say that George Barclay is um, part of rationalism and idealism because he did believe um, he did believe that uh, that the world and, and it's similar to what Leibniz thinks and and as far as I know I don't. I don't know that there's any evidence that that Barclay really uh, studied Leibniz or understood the monadology, but it but it's convenient at least uh, to to transition from Leibniz's monadology into what uh, George Barclay or Berkeley uh, believed. Um, uh, if you take the monadology and think of the matrix universe as being as being so the matrix universe as being the perceptions of all the monads including God's perceptions um, you know that's one way of looking at things and then Barclay has this idea that the universe, that he believes that things only exist when they're being perceived as well. So, for example, if I'm, if I'm, if I turn around and I'm, I'm looking at, you know, these books. So these books exist, you know, because I'm looking at them. And my perception of them is what makes them is what makes them exist. The their existence is grounded in my perception. Uh, but when I look away, I'm no longer grounding them in my perception. And so they've lost their reality to the degree that their reality is grounded in my perceptions, kind of along the ways that, that Leibniz is thinking. So there's a, there's a lot of similarities here, but they are different. Uh, because Barclay wants to say, now that I turn away, I'm no longer grounding those things. Um, but if somebody else were looking at them, then their, their existence would be grounded in somebody else perceiving them. Um, and then ultimately, of course, God perceives everything. And so it's really God's perception that is grounding the existence of everything. But everything is perceptions. Okay. And so he is a kind of an idealist, uh, but he argued with empiricists. So he, he structured along a lot of his arguments along empiricist lines. And, and was not, he was not trying to disagree with the empiricists. He was trying to agree with them, but just to show them that the metaphysics had to be different than what they thought it was. That they were being a little naive and not considering the, the full metaphysics. So, Barclay doesn't come till later, so I have him historically down a little bit later, but, but that's all really what I want to say about him. Uh, empiricism. Uh, comes out of the scientific revolution, 
You know, so we have Robert Boyle, um, Isaac Newton, uh, where we have some real substantial achievements of the scientific revolution right at the, the later half of the 17th century. And remember, this is right around the time that the English Revolution is taking place. So this is like, they're working during the protectorate uh, of Cromwell and the restoration. And uh, so that's, that's what's going on in the background. They lived through the English Revolution, uh, the civil wars and the beheading of Charles and all this kind of stuff. Uh, and Robert Boyle and Isaac Newton are English men uh, who operated in London uh, or, out, or outside of London. Um, okay, so, so empiricism is this, this, uh, is this way of looking at the world that assumes that our perceptions somehow correspond to reality. That there is a reality which causes our perceptions. And the reality has a rational structure because it's a physical structure. And so it has geometric structure that is rational but those, those physical structures physically in a kind of Newtonian way cause our perceptions through our body and the organs. And so this is like the other side of Cartesianism. This does come out of Descartes, but Descartes could go in the direction of Leibniz once you start to take the idea of a soul residing in a body. Once you take that seriously, then you might end up in Leibniz's monadology. Another way is to say, like Descartes starts doing, that it's the nerves, you know, we start looking at the atomic structure and we start thinking about sense perception and the way that the, the body is structured in order to receive information from the world. And then we start to think about our mind as being caused by our perceptions, not our mind causing the perceptions, right? Leibniz says the mind causes the perception. The empiricists say, no, 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 no. It's the perceptions which come from the real world that cause our mind. Uh, and, and I think this is naively what, this is the kind of philosophy that is typical for uh, a person in the United States and North America, uh, and even mostly throughout Europe nowadays, is that people believe that the mind is somehow caused by the perceptions of the world. And so this is kind of the, the more intuitive way of looking at the world that most of us adopt. Uh, and we think that it's and what's interesting is that we think that it's not philosophical. We think that we're not making a philosophical claim when we, when we believe or talk in this way. Uh, but really, uh, at the time that empiricism arose, this was not obvious. Uh, this was no more obvious than Leibniz's monadology. And to make a commitment to say that your mind is produced by the things that you perceive is to have a philosophical metaphysical perspective. And this has become so dominant that many scientists, you know, people who believe in a kind of scientism that may not be scientists themselves, but they might be, but they kind of just believe, look, I don't want to, I don't want any of your mumbo jumbo. I'm just a, I just believe in science. Uh, often what they mean is that they, they adopt an, uh, an empiricist metaphysics, uh, thinking that it's not a philosophical pers per, uh, perspective, thinking that it's not something that needs to be argued for, it's just something you have to assume. And, and there's no argument about it. Okay. Um, 
So naively, this is what most of us believe, and we don't think that we're doing philosophy, but you are doing, you have a metaphysical belief. You know, there's no getting out of having a metaphysical perspective. All right, so we'll, we'll take a little bit um, closer look at empiricism, especially I want to focus on John Locke primarily and then talk about David Hume a little bit. All right, so I'll, I'll, I'll do that in the next couple of videos.